Hi everyone, thanks for attending this talk. Today I will talk about the parameterized hardware accelerators for lattice-based cryptography that we designed, as well as the application of these accelerators to a software hardware co-design for QTesla. This is joint work with my collaborators Shangquan Tian, Jakob Schaeffer from Yale University, Bernhard Jung from Mantrunk in Germany, Nina Bingdell from University of Waterloo, as well as Patrick Longa from Microsoft Research. So during today's talk, I will first explain why we are providing a new hardware design for lattice-based schemes, given that there are already many existing work. Then I will give a brief background introduction for the digital signature scheme QTesla that we used to showcase the performance of the hardware accelerators that we developed. Following that, I will focus on two of the hardware blocks and expand the design details. In the end, I will show the software hardware co-design for QTesla which is prototyped based on a RISC-V platform. So now let's take a look at the new lattice-based hardware design that we're targeting. Before that, as I mentioned briefly, lattice-based schemes are pretty popular nowadays. And as a result, there are many different types of hardware designs for different lattice-based schemes. One type of the existing design focuses only on the development of one or two building blocks, for example, the Gaussian sampler, these blocks cannot cover all the expensive computations in a full lattice-based scheme, therefore the schemes are only partially accelerated. Moreover, most of the existing work only support one set of the security parameters, and hardware architecture they provided is fixed as well. Also, the target of this work is just usually one specific lattice-based scheme. Moreover, these designs um, they don't take into account the portability metric. Therefore, they do not offer any support for standard interface communications. Another type of existing designs provide the full hardware realization for a specific lattice-based scheme. And therefore, these designs provide very good speed up. However, still, the same problems exist in these designs. For example, fixed security parameters, fixed architecture, no support for standard I.O., etc. More recently, a more flexible approach uh, gradually being proposed and used, which is to use the software hardware co-design approach. And this brings more flexibility to the architecture design, but at the same time, the same problems remain, fixed parameters, tied to one specific scheme, etc. Therefore, in this work, we would like to propose a new hardware design for lattice-based schemes, which is able to solve all of the problems that we have just discussed. The idea is to first develop a set of hardware accelerators that are generic enough to be able to support different lattice-based schemes. Further, we want to make sure that these hardware accelerators can not only be tuned depending on the security parameters, but further, users can tune the performance parameters when targeting different applications. Another very important design decision we made in our work is that we use standard handshaking protocol throughout our design to make sure that our hardware accelerators as well as the software hardware co-design can be ported very easily among different standard platforms, for example, RISC-V-based and ARM-based architectures. Now let's take a look at the QTesla scheme. QTesla is a lattice-based signature scheme that has been a second round candidate in this PPC standardization effort, but it didn't advance to the third round. Its reference implementation is already integrated in several open source libraries. QTesla is a scheme which is secure against both classical and quantum adversaries, and it's also secure against some implementation attacks, for example, some side channel and some port attacks. Another advantage of QTesla is that it only uses very simple arithmetic operations, so they are perfect targets for um, hardware acceleration. But the property that actually makes QTesla stand out from the rest is that it comes with properly secure instantiation. That means the security hardness of a given instantiation is properly guaranteed as long as its corresponding RLW instance remains secure. This leads, however, to rather large parameters, as you can see from the table here. So in this work, a very interesting research question for us to answer is that how much the performance of QTesla can be improved by use of hardware acceleration. Now let's take a look at the operations needed in QTesla. 
For the signature generation, given the secret key and the input message, what you first do is to sample a random polynomial y. And then you do a hash based on the secret key, the random polynomial, as well as the uh, input message. And then the check is carried out to ensure that uh, the acceptance is valid during the verification step. If the check succeeds, you go and compute a potential signature, which would later be checked to ensure the security. If this check passes, you go ahead and send out the signature. Otherwise, you go back to the random polynomial sampling step and repeat the whole um, process. For the verification step, given the public key, the signature, as well as the input message, what you do is you first hash all of them together, and then you do a comparison with part of the signature. If this comparison result is valid, then you go further and check the security property. If this check passes, the verification passes, otherwise um, it fails. So that's pretty much how Qtesla's uh, signing and verification works. As we can see from the whole procedure, the operations involved in Qtesla um, are pretty straightforward, are pretty simple. Basically, all you need are sampling, hashing, some comparison, some multiplication, as well as additional operations. Now let's take a look at the full list of the accelerators that we implemented for lattice-based schemes. We used Qtesla as an example to get the reference software profiling results and further to get an idea of the computation cost for different functions using lattice-based schemes. As expected, most of the time within a lattice-based scheme is actually taken by the hash function as well as the polynomial multiplication. Further, the Gaussian sampling process also takes a fair chunk of the computation time. We also found that for Qtesla, the sparse polynomial multiplication also takes a big portion of the computation time. Such patterns can also be found in many other uh, lattice-based schemes. Therefore, um, based on these profiling results, as well as the repetitive evalu evaluation results for the full software hardware co-design, we implemented the following hardware blocks for lattice-based schemes, including a unified hardware core for both Shake and C-Shake, targeting 128 and 256-bit security level, and a novel parameterized binary search CDT-based Gaussian sampler, as well as a novel and fully pipelined entity-based polynomial multiplier. Further targeting Qtesla, we also implemented a parameterized sparse polynomial multiplier, as well as a very lightweight HMAX sum module. More details can be found in our paper. During today's talk, I will only focus on the Gaussian sampler and entity-based um, polynomial multiplier. Now let's take a look at the design of the CDT sampler. Here I'm showing the pseudocode for the binary search CDT-based Gaussian sampler. The algorithm works as follows. At first, you are given a random number x and um, a pre-computed CDD table whose depth is not necessarily the power of 2. In order to carry out a binary search, what you first do is you split the CDD table into two chunks, and later you will focus your search within um, the chunk whose depth is the power of 2. Then, depending on the value of the input value, um, input random number as well as the CDD table, you carry out a binary search. And in the end, you will figure out um, the corresponding row of the CD table and extract the index of it. And this index will later be sent out as one sample. In the hardware design, um, we implemented a binary search engine, which basically uh, keeps interacting with the pre-initialized memory, storing the values of CDT. This diagram here shows the full architecture for the sampler. On the left side, you can see that the CDT sampler gets inputs from an outside C-shake module. These inputs will further be processed by a PRNG module, which prepares random inputs of a targeted precision. Then the PRNG pushes its results to an input FIFO, and this FIFO will feed inputs to the binary search engine. Once the results are available, they are pushed to an output FIFO, which is responsible for um, communicating with the outside world. Uh, one thing to note is that within the design of the CD sampler, the communication within the sampler as well as the communication between the sampler and the outside world are all implemented for an XC4 light like handshaking protocol. Therefore, the parallelism, the synchronizations among different blocks are very easily maintained um, in our design. 
Overall, our CDD device Planpillar has a few good features. First of all, the whole design is fully parameterized. You can freely choose the security parameters, namely the standard deviation, the targeted precision, as well as the tail cut. Further, you can also determine how many samples you want to generate at a time, which is determined by the batch size parameter. Therefore, as long as your lattice-based scheme involves relatively small standard deviation, you can use our CTD sampler in your design. Further, our design for the CTD sampler is fully constant time and also pretty lightweight. We will see that in a minute in the following table. This table shows the performance of the CTD sampler. As you can see, our sampler can be easily tuned to support different security and, um, and performance parameters. Further, you can see that the area usage of the sampler is very low, which shows that the design is very lightweight. Another important finding from this table is that due to the use of the handshaking protocol between different blocks, the searching phase and the PRNG phase are actually perfectly overlapped. This um, you can see from the table because the total cycles um, is very close to the cycles taken by the PRNG. When we compare our design with uh, state-of-the-art implementation for Gaussian sampler, um, you can see that actually none of the existing design can be plugged in a real-world application easily because the computations in these designs are fully sequential. There is no synchronization mechanism implemented. Uh, between different sub-blocks in, the, um, in their design. Moreover, these designs, they use much faster, but arguably less cryptographically secure PRNG, while our design uses a C-shake-based cryptographically strong PRNG. Now let's take a look at the design of the entity-based polynomial multiplier. Currently, there are two widely adopted approaches for implementing entity-based polynomial multiplications, both in software and hardware. One method, allows uh, one to only use a unified algorithm, uh, basically by using the same butterfly for both forward and inverse entity. The other approach uses a separate algorithm where the forward uses CT butterfly and the inverse entity uses a different butterfly, the GS butterfly. These two approaches both have pros and cons. For the unified approach, if you think about it uh, from the hardware perspective, only one hardware module is needed because you um, have the same algorithm for both forward and um, inverse entity. But this would require a few extra computations um, in the algorithm, for example, pre-scaling, bit reversal, as well as some post-scaling operations. While for the separated approach, um, because of the different butterfly structures, you don't need such extra computations. Um, however, as a hardware design, uh, you will need two um, separate modules for forward and inverse entity. In our work, we proposed a new entity algorithm, which is called CTGS entity algorithm. It's a unified algorithm in the sense that the same algorithm is used for both forward and inverse entity. And this is achieved by designing a combined CTGS butterfly unit, which is able to function either as a CT butterfly unit or as a GS butterfly unit. We will see more details in the following pseudocode. Therefore, our approach only involves one hardware module and no extra computations are needed. This is the pseudocode for the CTGS entity algorithm. The core, part of the, the core part of the algorithm is that the constants for the control logic have to be initialized properly at the very beginning. As you can see, the structure of the loop or the control logic when you map it to hardware designs for forward and inverse entities are pretty much the same. The only thing that differs is the inner loop logic, which is handled by a merged butterfly unit. Another feature of our design worth mentioning is that we implemented an efficient memory access scheme to ensure that there is no idle cycles in the computational units. And in this case, the entity-based polynomial multiplier is fully pipelined. In the end, we present such an entity-based polynomial multiplier. The diagram here shows uh, the structure of it. It basically involves a few components. First of all, input memories, as well as the memories storing the pre-computed total factors. And for the computational units, we have a merged butterfly unit. And we have a generic Montgomery multiplier. Uh, we have a pointwise multiplication unit, as well as some control logic. 
Overall, our design for the polynomial multiplier is fully pipelined um, in terms of the length of the polynomial as well as the modulus. Um, further, our design is fully pipelined, fully constant time, and similar to the design of the CD sampler, the multiplier also supports standard interface. This table here shows the performance of the polynomial multiplier and the comparison with uh, state-of-the-art related work. As we can see, compared with related work, our design is parameterized. Um, it supports flexible parameters tuning. Further, you can see that our design actually improves very good cycle count. Um, uh, basically, the cycles we achieved is very close to the theoretical cycle limit. And as we can see from the table, when compared with a high-performance hardware design, uh, which actually instantiates four parallel butterfly units, our design actually achieves a much better time error product. Compared with another related work, actually shows that um, you know, we achieve similar cycle counts, but um, actually bigger area consumption. This is actually due to the fact that these related work, they fix the, the value of uh, the length of the polynomial as well as the modulus Q. And this shape of this specific Q actually supports very cheap reduction, which is essentially a bunch of addition and shifting operations. And this can be easily done in hardware within one clock cycle. So the pipeline structure in this work is pretty simple to design. Okay, now let's take a look at the prototype of a real lattice-based scheme Q-Tesla on a RISC-V-based software hardware co-design. We use Morex SOC in our work as the platform. This is a very lightweight SOC, which is fully open sourced. Morex integrates a few components. First of all, a 32-bit standard RISC-V CPU, which is called VEX RISC-V. It also has a memory block, which is shared uh, for data and instructions. It also has an APB module, which can talk to different peripherals, for example, the UART module. Similarly, we add the hardware accelerators to the SOC by adding them to the APB as peripherals. This is a setup we use for real experiments. On the left side, there is a workstation, which first programs the FPGA and later loads the compiled software code to the RISC-V. On the right side, we're showing an Arctic 7 FPGA which is actually the FPGA recommended uh, by NIST for PQC hardware implementations. The RISC-V together with the lattice-based accelerators that we designed are running on the FPGA. Once the computation on the FPGA is finished, the computation results are sent back to the workstations through the UART module. Now let's take a look at the evaluation results. This table here shows the speedups which is brought by the hardware accelerators for different functions in a lattice-based schemes, namely shake, Gaussian sampler, polynomial multiplication, as well as sparse polynomial multiplication. As we can see from the table, very good speedups achieved for all of these functions. You may have noticed the speedup for the Gaussian sampler is especially high, which is much higher compared to the other functions. This is partly due to the fact that the hardware accelerator itself accelerates the software function very well. Another important reason is that the data communication overhead, uh, which is between the uh, software and hardware, is actually perfectly overlapped with the computation within the sampler. Therefore, the overhead becomes almost negligible in this case. That's also why the speed up of the software hardware code design is very high in this case. This table shows the performance of the key generation of QTesla for different design configurations. The leftmost column shows the different configurations. Here, a plus sign means that the corresponding hardware accelerator is integrated to the Marex SOC. Depending on the user application, you can either just add one accelerator into the design, or you can add several um, accelerators in a merged fashion. If you want to achieve a full speed up, you can simply add all the um, available hardware accelerators into the SOC. We can see that when all the available hardware accelerators are added to the design, the best speedup is achieved for both QTesla P1 and P3 variants. For the P3 variant, an over 100 times speedup is achieved. And also in this case, um, this configuration gives the best time error product. We can see that um, QTesla, although 
um, is not competitive in terms of software um, performance. When uh, you run your test on our software and co-design, you can easily, for example, for the P1 variant, finish key generation operation um, within less than 8 milliseconds. We can also observe a similar pattern for the signing operation in Q-Tesla and around 10 times speed up is achieved when all the hardware accelerators are integrated in it and the smallest time error product is achieved. Similarly, um, we can see a similar pattern for the verification. When we compare the performance of Q-Tesla on the Merax SOC with all the hardware accelerators integrated, um, further with the state-of-the-art implementation, of um, basically two other lattice-based signature schemes, namely the Lithium and Falcon. We can one thing to note here is that um, given that there is no um, dedicated hardware-based implementation for these schemes, a fair comparison is not, not able to achieve. But let's still try to do some comparisons. Um, here we can see that although the performance of the properly secure Q-Tesla variants are slower compared to the software implementation of the Lysim and Falcon, when you integrate the dedicated hardware accelerators into the design, you can actually achieve comparable performance compared to the other two signature-based um, schemes. We also compared with a RISC-V-based software hardware co-design, which is focused on generic lattice-based schemes. And, um, in this work, they included the performance of Q-Tesla with outdated heuristic parameters. So for better comparison, we synthesized our design with these heuristic parameters and um, do the comparison. Note that in this related work, they implemented a customized and um, non-standardized processor, which is closely coupled with the hardware part because their design target low power and low cycle IC complications. So you can see that their work presents a much smaller cycle count because they pack more computations into one clock cycle. But this, um, in the end, leads to a poor frequency. So overall, our design actually um, achieves better performance in terms of time, although we are using a standard processor model. OK, to summarize, in this work, we presented um, the design and implementation of a few hardware accelerators for lattice-based schemes, including a Shake and C-Shake unified core, a binary search CDT-based Gaussian sampler, an NTT-based polynomial multiplier, as well as sparse polynomial multiplier and HMAX sum module. Further, we showcased uh, the prototype of a full Q-Tesla scheme by use of the accelerators that we developed. and. Um, Last but not least, um, you can find our open sourced code from this link. Thank you for your attention.